for this last session, I want to thank Doc so much. For this last session, we just want to answer a question. How can we deal with the issue of cheating? How can you tool yourself to deal with it once and for all? I was of the opinion, pastor said it, I th uh, elder said it, I thought it was on. I will have titled it, uh, I give it a commercial caption, which is family, future, and fortune. It is well. But if you ask the direct, the direct topic, it will be, I broke my vow. Is there any hope? Let me ask the church again. How many persons are ready for this session? Let me see the hand. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray briefly. Father in heaven, the members want to study briefly before we close. It's a very sensitive topic. Many people don't want to talk about it. As you give us practical guides, may we end this week-long program with hope that we can be victorious. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm skipping every introduction. The Bible says, marriage should be honored by all. How many people should honor marriage according to the text? Let me hear you. How many people must honor marriage? And the marriage bed kept pure. How should the marriage bed be kept? God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. I have some few questions that we'll find answers for. But I want to define adultery. Adultery is voluntarily sexual intercourse between a married person and another person who is not his or her lawful spouse. Adultery. It is voluntarily Adultery is voluntary, spiritual, apostasy, or to stray away from the covenant with God. The English word adultery comes from the Latin ad, which means two, and alta, which means other different. In other words, to make different or to alter, to change adultery. In the Bible, the first mention of adultery is the Hebrew word nav in the Ten Commandments which says you shall not commit adultery. You shall not willingly sleep with another other than your spouse. Adultery. Question one. I find myself attracted to someone other than my spouse. What can I do to ensure that I will be faithful. My response, number one. Honestly analyze the reasons that is leading you to find another person attractive to you other than your spouse. Be genuine in your assessment. Whenever issues of adultery come, quick, we go, let us pray for God to help. No. First, be genuine. What reasons, what triggers made me attracted to another woman other than my wife? What is making me attracted to another man other than my husband? Analyze the underpinnings. If 
the situation persists, inform your spouse or close confidant about it immediately. Every life must have a trash can. Somebody say trash can. I didn't hear you. Say trash can. All right, that's a commercial break. All right. The witches from Sierra Leone. Every life must have a trash can. What do we put in a trash can? Trash. There are things you cannot tell anybody. Aside Jesus, aside the Holy Spirit, you need a human being that you can confide in. You know that this person got my back. Every human being needs it. When it gets very difficult, things you cannot tell anybody, at least there should be one earthly person that you will be vulnerable and break down before. If you are a man, it is encouraged. It must be a man. If you are a woman, it is encouraged. It ought or should be a woman. Okay. What did I say so far? Whenever adultery occurs, it's not an event. There have been series of events that were happening silently. Adultery now is finally what we call the outcome. So it cannot happen by accident. Sometimes when the issue of adultery pops up, we quickly run, use the Bible, and say, it, no, please, first we are human beings. Address the issue. Okay. So I'll be, I'll, I'll be dealing with it, and when the, the communication crew gets it right, we will, they will just follow me. We don't have time much. Sorry about this. Okay, we are back. You need wisdom here. On who to speak to this one I'm not shouting I beg you be careful who you speak to this one I beg you in the name of Jesus himself be careful who you speak to at the very moment you find your emotions turning from your spouse to someone else you need to indirect you need to immediately redirect your emotions back to your spouse. Listen, if you lose it at this point, you will mess up. Everybody has the tendency to cheat. Everybody, including Ellen White and Virgin Mary. The reason is, we said in my first presentation, is what problem? A sin problem. So there must be some guardrails. Somebody say guardrails. I didn't hear you. Say guardrails. Some guardrails. When you are driving, the guardrails prevent you from skidding off the road. Adultery is a dangerous thing. So you need guardrails. I'm not going to go into the too much Bible. I want to give practical stuff. So the Bible says, those who live should no longer live for themselves. Adultery is selfish decision. We'll get into it. In some instances, if we can redefine. What does it mean to adulterate? To adulterate is to corrupt or debate. To adulterate is to make impure or inferior. To adulterate sexually means to, to be involved in any sexual impure activity, including using a deal dough, is to adulterate. Among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, those who are not married, or fornication, or any kind of impurity. So the question is, but we have it, how do we deal with it? What are the characteristics of one drawn into adultery? Can you know 
who is an adulterous person? Number one, Elder, in case I forget a certain question I need to address, remind me before I close. Number one, characteristics. Number one is temptation to what? Tastes. Lured by the forbidden fruit. There is this temptation. So, you are married. But you see another man or another woman and you started reflecting with your mind how she will look like. What is there? I wish to also have a bite. That is the commencement. An adulterous person has the desire to taste. Number two, emotional excitement, we call it to fulfill lust. Before adultery is committed, there is an emotional excitement. Number three, for the sake of time, minimizes the marriage. An adulterous person would devalue the marriage covenant. Anytime they are talking about the sanctity of marriage, anybody who is prone to commit adultery will begin to say, oh, let's hear. Oh, let's talk about it. Watch it. Anybody devaluing the sanctity of the marriage covenant is prone to commit adultery. Characteristic number four. There will be physical withdrawal from your spouse. Before adultery occurs, you will notice the sexual life. Those of you not yet married, not it down. Your sexual life, you begin to notice it's not stable anymore. This presentation, when I do it as a master class, all, oh, I'll take $400 from one person. Take notes. Now, number five. You see, all these, there are like 10 steps under each of them, but I'm giving the highlights. There is a desire for temporal things over eternal things if the person is a Christian. Immediately, you cannot be craving for spiritual things and commit adultery. So before it happens, adultery is not an event. It's what? It's a process. So you devalue the marriage. You begin to, all the things I've stated. And you notice your excitement towards temporal things over eternal things. You choose the present pleasure over the eternal. Number six. Characteristics of an adulterous person. Anger over accountability. Refuses to discuss marriage problems. Anger. Immediately they raise issues in the house. Contain. Anger. Rave. Anger. Watch him. Watch her. They are avoiding accountability. An adulterous person twists the truth. Lies and denies the affair. You will notice there is thing I'm saying. This is, no, sometimes they make you feel like you are lunatic, you are stupid. They twist the truth. An adulterous person indulging in imagination, they avoid reality. They are in an ecstatic state. Thinking about that girl in the office, thinking about that man they have met so they start devaluing and make no mistake men i speak from a place of authority adultery is very high among women be here with all your suit and all your body or your african attire like tk menza they will eat under you and you'll be there it begins also Imagining, 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 not living a life of reality, adulterous person, overly protective of the other party, the person they are into the adultery with. You raise an issue with that person, you have them from they will defend till death. They don't want you to say anything ill about the person. Characteristics numb to God's leading. Not even a divine service on fake family fellowship will change them. No way. They are still there. 
they harden their heart and they start saying, after all, I'm not the only person, or even the pastors are involved, even the elders are involved, we call it equalization, whilst they numbed God's leading adultery. First Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, no temptation has seized you except, you, you, you know it. Question 6, why does anyone get involved in adultery? Why? I'm trying to provide some answers. Typically, people get into adulterous relationships because they rationalize their wrong actions as right. Then they indulge in selfish pleasures to the extent that they develop a heart that is hardened towards the desires of God. All a man's ways seems right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. So an adulterous person, why do they get into adultery eventually? They try to rationalize. And he's not always here. But the way he talks to me, I don't get attracted to him. The way he's always finding fault with me. The reason why I'm sleeping with this man in my office is because my husband refused to show me. They know women like attention. He's not giving me attention. This is the reason why. He's not satisfying me in bed. This is, oh, there is always a reason. What are the characteristics and the consequences of an adulterous person? God's perspective from Proverbs chapter 6. I'll pick them pe, 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 for the sake of time. Number one, adulterous people are smooth talkers. These they are mad. Proverbs 6, verse 23 to verse 24. The Bible says the corrections of discipline are the way to lie, keeping you from the immoral woman, from the smooth tongue. Of the wayward wife. Adulterous person, based on the Bible, I am not saying it. The Bible says they are sweet talkers. And some of you, the women, these bad boys, they talk to you, you come home, no respect for your husband anymore. You are imagining things. They are liars. They, they, they smooth talk you. And you are all imagining. So you see a young woman or a married woman with a phone. She's just laughing. When I see that phone, <laughs> when I catch that young man, <laughs> I will finish it. <laughs> Let me not say it. <laughs> Nobody should try me. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> adulterers play with fire and they get burned. Somebody asked me a question. This is what I'm referring to. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Proverbs 6, verse 27. Adulterous people get burned. Number three, adulterous person will be punished. Proverbs 6, verse 29. So is he who sleeps with another man's wife, no one who touches her will go and punish. Because he will punish you, adulterous person. Number four, adulterous lack judgment. Proverbs 6, verse 32. Immediately, your husband or wife or your would be boyfriend, you notice this guy is stupid. He doesn't think well. He lacks wisdom. Listen, a man who commits adultery, the Bible says what? No, come on, talk to me. The Bible says what? Lacks judgment. Judgment is the wisdom. Talk about. He careless the ramifications. It's a pelvic liberation. Let me satisfy my pelvic needs. You don't care the STDs. You don't care the dangers. You don't care the shame. You don't care the embarrassment. It is what I want to do now. Guess what? Make no mistake. All of us are susceptible to it. Nobody is immune. Our only surety is God's word. Somebody should say an amen. Adulterous people destroy themselves. Whoever does so destroys himself. The Bible says, Proverbs 6, verse 32. Adulterous person will be disgraced. You remember that four days, sin would disgrace you, it would disappoint you, it would dominate you, then finally it disgraces you, then it destroys you. The Bible says, blows and disgrace are his lots. Proverbs 6, verse 33. Adultery will surely embarrass you. Adulterous people will experience never-ending shame. And his shame will never be wiped away. Proverbs 6, verse 33. Adulterous person 
Invoke anger and jealousy in your spouse. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 34. For jealousy arouses a husband's fury. This is what adultery does. When a man sees that another man is evading the territory of his spouse, or even this chicken rat, or this lizard relationship with, 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 with uh, how do we call it, cornrow hair and, and, and sunglasses, you notice even your girlfriend, as somebody is getting close, and the man is angry. This boy, who is a mini toad with a blue blue black suit and red tie is angry why somebody is talking to my girlfriend how much more a wife the bible says for jealousy arouses a man's fury adulterous persons often become the object of revenge and he the husband will show no mercy when he takes revenge adultery i'm asking the simple question how i broke my vows is there any hope but we are putting it in context what are the causes of committing adultery what are the causes if i were to have time i would have dealt into that a little but let me run with it very quickly let me make a case then i pick the lesson quickly the man who did this deserve to die whereupon nathan replied you are the man why did you despise the word of the lord by doing what is evil in his eyes Revelation 2, 4, 5 says, I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Now, why is adultery so deceptive? Ten top truth about adultery. Ten top truth about adultery. Number one, it skews objectivity. Adultery will make a man or a woman never, ever objective. Always subjective. Adultery it affords the illusion of being loved. So a married man is dating a single girl and she's under the delusion, the illusion that I am being loved. It's a lie. Adultery makes you feel you are loved. Adultery, it gives a false sense of significance. It makes you feel you are special. You are not. You are not. Anybody committing adultery with you is playing a scam game. It's a matter of time. So it skews objectivity. It affords the illusion of being loved. It gives a false sense of significance. Adultery. Number four, for the sake of time. It feels good physically. It provides a temporal sense of security. I can break all of them down. It gives a false feeling of connecting. We are just connected. Anytime we meet, we are just into each other. You are stupid. You are not into each other. Adultery makes both parties feel wanted. As if somebody is running after them. Sex that you must have and be free. After having sex, you can pray and move about. You are hiding. Why? Adultery numbs emotional pain. So the person engaged in adultery will never feel the pain. So whatever is happening in the home, he doesn't care. She doesn't care. Why? Her emotions, his emotions is with somebody else. Adultery. It diverts attention away from family problems. So there is a problem in the family. Instead of looking at it, addressing it, he's being evasive, elusive. His attention is elsewhere. And the family is struggling. Sometimes the women are battling. Sometimes a poor man cannot even tell anybody that I feel my wife is cheating and the men die in silence. Adultery. It can be a weapon to punish the spouse. Some people use it as vengeance. Oh, you did it, I will cheat and you did it. And somebody has one lotto. I will cheat with who? Somebody has just hit the jackpot. And there are young men in church who are expert in sleeping with people's wives. The men in Nairobi Central, watch out for the men. Hey, don't joke with this young boy. So they will play you right now. You'll be shocked. I, I am always watching my wife. These young men, they will sleep with... You'll be screaming here, the Lord, the Lord. And they are giving your wife 
what you cannot imagine i refuse that my eyes are open peter very wide open i won't take anything to chance no way the bible, <laughs> the bible says there is a way that seems right to a man but in the end it leads to death why are why are people or why do people get drawn into adultery i think i make an error ephesians 4 verse 18 to verse 19 number one adulterers evoke anger and jealousy in their spouses that's what the bible says so number one we focus on what we thought would meet our need so why do people get into adultery so the focus is this is what i like this is what to make me happy then adultery begins number two we open the door of compromise number three we fail to look at the lifelong consequences number four we blame our married partner for my problem why did she cheat do you know that we have suffered in his hands please it's not my wish i don't wish to do it it's because he hey take your responsibility what kind of nonsense is that you've gone to sin instead of you to take responsibility you are again crying and diverting it if you do that one to me the way i will blast you in the counseling room what, what, what kind of thing is that first accept i have sin what i did was not acceptable then we begin to find out what are the root causes we blame our marriage partners. The more you are blaming your partner, the more you are finding fault with your partner, the more you are looking at the weaknesses of your partner, you are going to likely commit adultery. Number five, we think we wouldn't get caught. Some people are pro. 50 years. Nothing is out yet. Your day will come. We believe it will make us happy. We rationalize that God understands our situation. We assume our mate will never change. The reason why people commit adultery, we harden our heart and we are lured lastly by lust. Adultery. Question 7. I'm running quite fast. Why should one stop committing adultery? Write this 10 point down. Quick. Why should one stop committing adultery? Number one, write it down. Your mate is wounded. Your partner is wounded. Number two, your integrity is destroyed. Look, all the years pass. If we have committed adultery after today, may God grant us the strength to say no or no more. To adultery, let the whole church say, Whoa, amen. Those online also type, Amen. No to adultery. Why must you stop adultery? Read between the first one is what your mate is what wounded, the second one is what your integrity is destroyed, the third one, your peace is forfeited. Number four, your morality is compromised. Number five, your health is jeopardized. Number six, your conscience is scarred. Number seven, your children lose their hero or heroine. If some children are dismissive of God on account of their father's failure, account of their mother's failure sometimes they're in the house and they see the men they see the women sometimes they see a lot of things and they are watching and sometimes the children are very jealous for their parents so your child all what you have told her before as a man he doesn't trust daddy again and guess what she moves into a level every man is like who daddy. if daddy i can trust can cheat every man who chats. some of them enter into lesbianism on account of this your future will not be blessed why should one stop adultery number nine your bible forbids it and number ten 
your God condemns it. Let's go over again. Read it with me. Why must we stop committing adultery? Everybody, let's go together. Number one is what? Is wounded. Number two, your integrity is destroyed. Number three, your peace is forfeited. Number four, your morality is compromised. Number five, your health is jeopardized. Number six, your conscience is scarred. Number seven, your children lose their hero. Number eight, your future will not be blessed. Number nine, your Bible forbids it. Number ten, your God condemns it. What is or are the causes of adultery? If I were to have time. You see, emotional immaturity of a person who is willing to sacrifice commitment to a married partner, believing that personal integrity is not important and that the need for love can be fully met while going against the will of God. It's a justification. I'm dealing with, I broke my vow. Is there any hope? So here are some situations. The philosophy is, they would say, confess the adultery. This is the lie. We call it the myth. And I'm giving Bible verses to support each of the scenarios. I will just put the affair behind me. No one needs to know. The truth is, the truth must come out in order for God to bring healing. It's a matter of time. It will happen. There is nothing hidden under the sun. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The second point, commit yourself completely to your covenant partner. Then the myth people say is, Children are the glue in the marriage. No, it's not the children. The truth is, commitment is the glue that holds a marriage together, not children. My basis is Malachi chapter 2. I've read it throughout the week. The Lord is acting as the witness between you and the wife of your youth. Because you have broken faith with her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant, has not the Lord made them one. In flesh and spirit, they are his. And why one? Because he was seeking godly offspring. So guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith with the wife of your youth. God says, I want godly seed. Don't commit adultery because I want godly seed. Your children should not carry the weaknesses you carry. Some parent in the book, Patriarchs and Prophets, in my first book, How the Mighty Have Fallen, and in white address that adulterous men and women they give the trait to their children. Number three, cut all ties with the third party. Don't talk to the woman now that we have finished this program and we want to go back to our families. Don't go back talking to her. Don't go back talking to him. Somebody will say, affairs are okay as long as no one knows. The truth is, adultery cannot be hidden. God knows, the illicit partner knows, and in time, others will know, ultimately, the affair will burn him. Can a man scoop fire in his lap without his cloth being burned? Number four, choose where to place your thoughts when you are tempted. Sometimes you are tempted to commit adultery. Sometimes the women can be very bad. Some of them use sex as a weapon. Some men even do it. They would never give sex to their partner. And the men would be begging me. I would never beg. Please let me, me, a man like me, never. I know the right things to do. I would, people are on their knees begging, please. It's a long time. Please, just one. Me, never. The myth is people who have affairs do not love their spouse. It is possible to still feel a love for one person, yet at the same time, be infatuated with another. Peter was just in the Holy Spirit. He says, God has just revealed this to you. The next time, they say, Satan, get away from me. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, 
If anything is ex excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. You know your own weaknesses. So please, manage it. If you know you can't, then some places go with your spouse. Or some meetings at the board places. Don't go. Why? I don't want to sing. You know yourself. Number five. Consider the difference between love and lust. The myth is, how can it be so wrong if it feels so right? Love is not a feeling. I address it. The supreme test to determine if something is right is the word of God. What God says. So we've dealt with that one. Husbands, love your wife. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. So for example, Samuela, she gets me angry sometimes. Her, she gets me angry. The only thing that restrained me, just the men, I, I'm not, I, the women can get you so angry. Sometimes you wonder, where did I marry her from? What a... The only thing that was, the Bible says, the same way I sin and God wonders, is this one also created in my image? That's the only thing that will restrain you. Number six, count the cost of adultery. The lie is, as long as no one knows, no one is hurt. Adultery hurts everyone involved. You've brought guilt and God's judgment not only upon yourself, but also upon the other person. You have destroyed your truthfulness, your credibility, and your testimony. That's what adultery does. And sometimes your family is shortchanged. Because if God refused to bless you on account of adultery, your family is shortchanged. Some of us, the way where we are, God should have blessed us far more. Adultery has taken God's blessing away. And your wife, your children, your posterity, you are there. And that blessing is elusive your generation which will have made them a certain height in society adultery has shortened but you know what as far as i can pay the bill as far as i have some money we are sorted no you have no idea the stock of blessing or the type of blessing god had in store a man who commits adultery lacks judgment whoever does so destroys himself the bible means what it says and says what it means number seven I'm about wrapping it up. Communicate godly sorrow. Um, if I admit I'm sorry about the affair, everything will be okay. No, it's supposed to be the Bible says there is a vast difference between worldly sorrow and godly sorrow. Between Peter and that of Judas, you must be genuine. Godly sorrow brings repentance. That leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. That's why we confess, we go back. We confess, we go back. If I were to have time, I would have dealt with six common mistakes a faithful partner makes. So you are the faithful partner. There are six mistakes that faithful partners make. I will not talk about this for the sake of time. Um, for the sake of time, I will jump the six P's of appeal. Let me jump straight. Now, I've committed adultery. How? What do I do? Number one, identify the cause of the failure or the failures. Be genuine. Garbage in, garbage out. If you lie to yourself, you'll be lying with a solution. A, def a defective solution will be profit. Step number two, I've committed adultery. What do I do? Number two, trace the patterns of your moral failures every moral failure has pattern if it's not the first time it has happened there are patterns that happen patterns so trace the patterns of your moral failure or failures step number three what do i do genuinely take full responsibility no blame game it's not because my wife refused me sex it's not because of this it's not because of this i was godless i take full responsibility first take genuinely take full responsibility how do i deal i've committed adultery what do i do step number four be ready for the consequences prepare to face the consequences don't go and be begging god stop the, be prepared to face the consequences ask god just for strength let me face the punishment dear lord strength for the punishment and sometimes sadly the 
punishment is not just you, your children, and your spouse. Number five, confess, seek forgiveness, and repent, both from your spouse and God. Confess, seek forgiveness, and repent. You can confess and seek forgiveness. If you don't repent, it's a cyclical thing. You'll be back again. Step number six, I've committed adultery. What do I do? Identify and engage trustworthy accountability partner. Don't trust everyone in this regard. Please look for somebody. See this lady? She excites a certain emotion in me. Watch the way I go around with her. Tell an accountability partner. Sometimes your wife may not have the capacity to manage it, or your husband. So it must be somebody you trust. That is your trash can, the person you trust. Number seven, I've committed adultery. What do I do? I don't intentionally hedge your moral space. Create guardrails. If you know the patterns, there are certain movies you will not watch. There are certain conversations you will not have. There are certain places you don't want to go. Why? I don't want to commit adultery. Because they start playing games in my mind and leading to various things. So I stop it. I will not. We call that you are, you are hedging your moral space or territory. Number eight, cut ties with the third party. The person you are committing adultery with, if you're in the same office, either seek to be transferred, seek, do everything to cut ties with the person. If it means quarreling with the person, to cease having a conversation, stop it. Point number nine, how do I protect myself after I've committed adultery? And I want to get it right after hope for families, build, establish, and flourish. Number nine, allow adequate time for healing. You've cheated. Your wife is aware. The next minute, you want her to be behaving at everything is well. Please, be. Are you correct? Everything is not well. It will take time. She is battered. He is damaged. Sometimes you just be there and the triggers will come. Then she's angry. Angry. Why is he angry? Something has played in her mind. He's just angry. Why is he behaving like that? The past has come again. So he's emotionally hurt. So whenever the situations arise, allow adequate time for healing. Point number 10. Don't be responsible for the healing of the third party. The person you've committed adultery with, now you want to become the pastor of the person. Please, you should go and look for a pastor. You go and look for a counselor. Don't go and be doing, are you okay? I'm just checking up on it. No! No! You are not responsible. Run! Don't be responsible for the healing. For the healing of the intruding party, I wanted to say. Step 11. Reinforce, reinstate your spiritual boundary. This is the reason why you need to join Uplift Your Morning. Every morning, 8 o'clock, 8.30. Papa, 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 papa. We pray. Papa, Wednesday prayer meeting. Come. Participate. Participate. Have a daily study. Sabbath, come to church. Be involved. Reinstate. Reinforce your spiritual Listen, Every week, we fast. You fast. Step number 12. Forgive yourself and move on. You can't be blaming yourself forever. You can't unwrite the past. We need to move on. Number 13. I think it's the last one. You must patiently win his or her trust again. You are coming to redate your wife. You are coming to re-engage your husband on the Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to end it here. I broke my vows. Is there any hope? Yes. The Bible says, and be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. If there is somebody here, your husband has cheated on you, your wife has cheated on you, please, is it easy? No. But look at this text. Because of what Jesus has done, sometimes you don't want to pray for the other party at all. The Bible says, 
for the Lord Jesus sake and for the love of the spirit that we strive together with me in you, in your prayers to God for me not because the person deserves it because of who Christ sometimes you become a fool for the relationship to work and the family not to be disintegrated we are fools for Christ's sake but ye are wise in Christ we are weak you become the weak vessel so that you become strong sometimes you become the despised person is there hope for families that have experienced adulterous relationship yes if I'm a young person and I'm engaged with an adulterous or a man or a woman married or fornicating there is hope we can become victorious at this moment I want us to sing the song you can take over the screen or do I have it I think I do I have it here oh brother be faithful I want us to sing all the stanzas and we pray and bring it to a close those of you joining online this is our last hymn oh brother be faithful soon Jesus will come for whom we have waited for so long oh soon we shall enter our glorious home we are singing all the stanzas and we pray a dedicated prayer and bring this to a close 602 602 you can rise up be faithful oh, brother, be faithful and soon shall go the Savior pronounce the glad well done faithful servant well done faithful servant the title is clear enter the joy of the Lord enter the joy of the Lord the last stanza Oh, brother, be faithful. Oh, brother, be faithful. Eternity is near. Shall tell for thy faithfulness now. Shall tell for thy faithfulness now. When bright smiles of gladness shall scatter thy tears. When bright smiles of gladness shall scatter thy tears. A coronet gleam on thy brow. 
Oh brother, be faithful. Oh brother, be faithful. The promise is sure. That waits for the faithful and the tried. To reign with the ransom, immortal and pure. Ever with Jesus abide. We want to pray at this moment. All heads bow, all eyes close. Pastor Peter, do I need to get close to the to the to the to the to the prayer box? All the prayers in this prayer box, we are taking it, all those online. If you have prayers, you can be dropping them. Simple, simple prayers. Engage your heart with ours as we pray. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Father in heaven, a whole one week, eight days, we have studied. We have looked at the families. We have brought our burdens. Thank you. Thank you. But tonight, all the prayers stuck in these boxes, the ones in our heart, the ones we shared forth online, the ones we deposited through the virtual space, we pray today, shield every life, protect every family, protect every individual. You know us individually. You know us personally. You know us comprehensively. So in the name of Jesus, all we ask for, all we pray for, Master, please meet every individual at the point of their needs. We pray for the women who are married. Many of them are broken. Many of them are discouraged. Many of them are in state of despair. Please, there is hope. There is hope. Homes that were giving these women high blood pressure, by the grace of God, there will be a turnaround. Any woman married, seeking for God to secure and bring back the husband, may it happen. In the shortest possible time. Any woman with insecurity, dissatisfied with the quality and the quantum of love she's receiving from the husband beginning this week, let there be a turnaround of situations. Any woman experiencing insecurity, seated every day, imagining and thinking how the husband is cheating somewhere but cannot verbalize it. We pray, let that home be turned around. Lord, evade the spaces. Anybody evading the homes of those women, may God drive them away like bees. Let our wives smile again. Let the mothers of our children be happy again. Any woman, who used to say curses word or cursing words to the husband beginning today. May they be blessings. We pray for the single ladies. We pray for the younger ones. Shield them from the dangers in the world. May they not be responsible for any broken home. Provide husbands who are men, not male, to our girls. May our daughters not experience the pains their mothers have experienced. May their future be better. Any child, girl child, carrying any form of character disposition inherited from the father or the mother, we pray for mercy. May God intervene. May God intervene. Any lady in this church, online, listening to this tape or shall in the future, who desire to have a husband of her own, 
may the Lord bless in that category. We pray for the widows. We pray for the divorcee who are damaged and broken, lonely and frustrated. Sometimes nobody thinks about them in the society. Lord, turn their story around. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Lord, bless them. Today, we pray for any girl or lady destined not to be married by heaven, strength to remain pure and faithful. We pray for the boys. Shield every boy from the sins of the fathers. Shield the teenagers from the dangers of the world. May our sons not die before their time. May they not become vagabonds, womanizers, and users of drugs. We pray. May they not be males. May they be men. May they, may, may they not leave the truth. May they become stalwarts of the faith. Responsible citizens of the nation. And may they project Jesus. May they not marry harlots. May their hearts not be after harlots and sons of squanderers. Shield them from sickness. Please, may our sons be married before they have children. The ones that have made mistakes in the past, the grace is sufficient. Now any young man here in this place, bless them with money. Bless them with money. Bless them with money. May they not beg before they eat. May they have in abundance. May they not beg before they survive. Bless the young men. Get them their own wives. And may they love the wives of their youth. We pray for the fathers. We pray for the leaders. We pray for the matured married men. The husbands. Lord, it's tough to be a man. All we pray for, favor. Bless the men. Bless the husbands. Bless the fathers. Three dimensions of blessings. Beginning today, may they become spiritual indeed. May they become the priests indeed. Please, may no man beg in his home for sex. May no man beg to fulfill his obligation as a man. School fees, rent, or facilities. Please bless the works of the men. Any man's business or job that is sinking, may you elevate it. Papa, please. Shield the men from public shame. If any man has sinned, Lord, deal in the secrets. Deal in the chambers. Just protect the men. When they are strengthened, they will lift the homes. In a special way, anybody sick in the family circle, seeking for healing, redemption, restoration, curative health, vitality and strength may you supply. Oh, today, bless every layer of the family. Bless this church. Bless Nairobi Central. Bless online church members of this church, including the guests. But in a special way, bless every member of this church. From the depth of my heart, Lord, bless them. Let 2024 be better than 2023. Let their nightmares dance like smoke. May you bless the works of their hands. May you bless the education of their children. May you bless them with opportunities and open doors. When people are begging for doors to open this year, those from this church, 
when they get to the doors, may it be open. I pray for the three pastors. I ask for a certain dimension of blessing that is uncommon. Papa, please, bless them and their wives. Bless them and their children. To run this church is tough. My heart goes out for them. From the depth of my heart, Lord, even if it means sparing me my blessing, bless these three pastors. Bless their children. They have needs. Sometimes they have financial needs. But because they are men of God, they can't speak. May you meet all of them at the point of their needs. May wealth and blessings from the south to the east, west and north fall in their bosom. May they not cry for lack of wants. May they not overthink for what they need to further their ministries. Bless them. Elevate them. We are looking for pastors across the world to bless this year. Begin with the three of them in this place. Oh, Papa, finally. I don't know when I will meet these friends of mine again. But if we do not meet again, one day, in a place called heaven, one day, on a street that is made of gold, may we meet. May we tell our stories, the struggles we have gone through in this life. May we sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. May our song be, redeem how I love to proclaim it. Redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem through his infinite mercy. May this be our portion. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the God of heaven lift up his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May God show you peace and all the good things of this life. Because there is hope for the families and beyond. In Jesus' name. Please, you can be seated. Before pastor comes, I just want to make a point. Those online, I ask, uh, what is the name? I ask uh, Victor. We begin a mentorship program next month. Getting to the tail end. Anybody interested, whether for your children, whether for your, as couples or singles, please, we encourage you. Lastly, we pray every morning you are looking for a place where morning devotions are conducted just daily, virtually. You can join Uplift Your Morning. Nairobi Central, God bless you. I love you from the bottom of my heart.